I'm not ready. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> right, I'm ready, except I'm not. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. My name is Ollie and along with Kira, we are going to talk to you about all of the different ways you can base your miniatures. For me, it is a really integral part of the hobby. It's something you can use to enhance a paint job or to bring uniformity to a unit or an army. I think it's something that gets overlooked quite a lot and personally, I hate painting bases. So Kira, having not played with many base materials before, is going to take a look at lots of different brands, lots of different ways you can do it and hopefully you can learn something from this video. Hello and welcome! We're here, we're doing basing stuff. I'm Kira. you might recognize me from all the other videos that I've taken over for Broadsword or my Twitch, which is Kira Elvenblood, link to follow. Um, so we're gonna be doing basic beginner basing, which is very hard to say, but very easy to do. Um, please follow me along today. We're going to be doing the most basic, quickest of bases to some more intermediate bases. We're going to be using everything that I could find, which is AK Interactive, Green Stuff World Resin. We're going to be using the, using the torch thing to cure the resin. It's going to be super fun. We're going to use some ge Geek Gaming Scenics as well. We're going to use everything. So yeah, drop if you're here, drop in the comments how you do your basing, because I feel like there's, there's more to it. But we're going to cover everything that I know today and a little bit more that I don't know. So hopefully nothing goes wrong. Wrong, but uh, do stay tuned and see see how I get on I'm excited so let's go right here we are 32 mil base I really want to flick it away goodbye <laughs> oh, I've only got one more can you get it for me no I've got one more here okay. okay I'm ready I'm ready I'm ready I've been promised chips so I'm gonna do it right so I'm going to start off with the simplest base anyone can do. A key part of this video is the fast dry basing glue from Geek Gaming because it dries fast. Jeez. Okay, don't do that with it. Right, that's too much. I got excited. So I'm going to pop some on. Ideally, you would have the rim of the base painted black already. Splodge around the basing glue. Use a crack brush because you won't be painting with whatever brush you're using again. These really are a fast, easy and realistic way to base your miniatures. There's a huge range you can choose from, but Kira is going to use the New Zealand Plains base ready. If you want to buy this, you know, log on to broadswordwargaming.com. Um, ideally, you should have a little tray and that way, whatever you drop, you can just pour back into the bag later. But I don't have that, so I'm going to sprinkle it on like this. Okay, I actually don't like to tap it down. But I do shake it off. I'll shake it off and I got it all over my fingers, which is normal for me. I'm going to tap it on even though I said don't do that. It's fine. Done! Ta-da! How easy is that? And it really is easy. With the addition of a tuft or two, you can bring a bit more to these bases. So all she's done here is add a dead tuft to the model. You peel it off and stick it onto the base. That is it. Super simple. Next thing we're going to look at is the AK Interactive Terrain's Dark Earth Acrylic Diorama stuff. This stuff is not as runny as Sterling Mud from um, Citadel, but it's still not as thick as I would like it to be. I like it already. I mean, I would literally just leave it like that, <laughs> but I'm not going to. It really smells though, why does it smell? For this one, Kira is using the Arid Earth Base Ready, but you really could use any other material you like. Grit, sand, earth, dirt, whatever. I'm gonna sprinkle this on again. You can dip it in, which works as well, but I like to sprinkle. I feel like you don't need the same coverage because when the mud shows through, it looks even better. There we go, try and pick it up, tap off the excess. Boom, done. For a relatively quick, cheap and easy way to do your bases, I think it looks great. Now, so obviously if you get a grassier one, you can put more grass on, you can put a little tuft on. I think the little dead tufts would look great on that as well. I'm not going to add one to this one because I quite like it the way it is. But you can see the mud shows through and I just think that looks even more realistic. You can add way more, way less. It's totally up to you. If you have a big base, this is a great way to do it so that you can have really grassy patches next to really muddy patches, which is when it really 
really stands out. But that's it. How easy is that? It takes like two minutes. I figured that one out by myself too. Cork. It's been the bread and butter basing material for hobbyists for years. Kira has never tried it before, so I've got some three mil rolls here from Amazon and she's going to have a play around with them. I'm going to glue this down with this. Now, maybe you should be using super glue from this uh, with this. I don't know. So only, oh, bugger. There's only one way to find out. That's a lot. Blah, 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 blah. It's fine. Simple enough, we've all seen these, well most of us have. Now you can paint this as roads, people use it as broken concrete, but Kira's going to do something a bit different. Moving on. Okay, so annoyingly, like a fool of a tuck, I forgot to cut out the little bit that I wanted to cut out. So I'm going to be doing that now with this tiny knife that I love so much. This is the only one I'm allowed to use. Ow, I think I cut myself. <laughs> okay, so essentially what I'm trying to do is I want to make a puddle. And I think I can, I think... <laughs> I think this is going to work. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. I should have done this beforehand, I know. Because now it's going to be like a triangle or something. It's not even... That's a disaster. Okay, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so let's pretend I ripped out the hole at the beginning and let's pretend it's dry and let's pretend it's stuck to the base. What's next, you may say? I'm going to use this stuff again, the darker. <laughs> oh god, I quit. Right, I actually love this stuff. I'm so glad I bought a massive tub of it. We're going to coat all of this in the dark earth. Remember, use a brush that you hate. A brush that has slighted you. Much like before, whilst the base here is still wet, Kira sprinkled on some base ready and stuck a tuft in the puddle. What she didn't do last time was use this the Green Stuff World UV Resin. What you do is you pour this into a space and then use the UV torch until it sets. What I want to do is where we made that little hole with the cork, I want to add a little bit of a puddle. So we're gonna go in with the UV resin. Careful, because it's still wet. It's not wet where I'm putting the resin, obviously. Now, I wish I had a little stick to sort of smudge this in. I don't really want to be using the lid. So I want it all in around that reed there. And we'll cure it with the light for a few minutes. And that is a puddle. It really is as simple as this. You just point the torch at it until it sets. Now this is a chemical. It is something you should be careful. Do be aware of fumes. Do wear gloves and masks and goggles and don't get it on yourself if you can. Now you could add a little bit of like brown ink or whatever color ink you want into it to give it that sort of muddy water feel. I actually have some AK dark mud effect here, but I just don't know how to use it. But I might try after this and see how we go. Be learning for me and you what not to do. I feel like I should just do what not not to do. Having never played with the AK Interactive dark mud enamel before, I was quite keen to see how this would work and how it would react with the base. So I'm not too sure how to use this, but I feel like I want to add it at the edges of that puddle. But I'm really, really scared it's not going to look good. But I just want it to look a little bit more wet, if you know what I mean. So it doesn't go from puddle to dry mud almost. I'm just going to brush it on the line. Now, it looks good now, but we'll see what it looks like when it dries. But so far, so good. Another product I've had for a while by the Little Leaf Company is a leaflet. Now, these are basically mini leaves that would fit in with the scale of your miniatures. To apply them to the bases, we're going to use the Matte Scenic Sealant Spray by Geek Gaming. This just lets them attach and goes a bit tacky before it dries. You want to seal your bases anyway, but I'm, I'm hoping what's going to happen here is I'll give it a few sprays, sprinkle on the leaves and they'll stick to that. I'm not, I might have to seal it again over that. I'm not too sure. Please do make sure you're giving this a good spray before you, or a good shake before you use it. Ooh, that's a hell of a spray. I'm nervous. I'm too nervous. Okay, it's fine. This is like intense. I missed. Okay. It's filled my puddle, which I'm not too sure I'm happy about. I'm going to add some on. I'm going to spray it again. OK, 
okay. I like it. I'm gonna salt bay on some more leaves. I like it! I think it looks really good. For a first effort at a kind of diorama style base, Kira has knocked this one out the park. Now, do be aware it's still wet, so when it's dry, I'll show you all the bases at the end. But moving swiftly on, we are going to do some more water resin ones, but this time they're full water resin rather than one with a base. So let's take a look. I've done this once before and I used these sort of bases and it, it did work, but I, I just think an MDF base is going to work better because of the beveled edge, the containment molds hold the MDF bases better because they're flat. So that just pops in there, but we're not going to do that yet. So we want this to be an underwater base. We're going to get our fast drying basing glue like this. I feel like I'm on art attack again. I'm not even mad. This time we're going to mix in desert sand and stone with tropical beach. The desert sand and stone will add a couple of rocks, whilst the tropical beach will give it a smoother underwater finish. I'm going to sprinkle some of that on. It's got some cute little pebbles in there. I'm not going to use any big rocks because this is an underwater base and I feel like you don't get big rocks underwater. Then I'm going to go in with the tropical beach sand. I'm going to sprinkle this around. Don't do this anywhere. You don't want to have sand because I guarantee you will be finding sand for the next six months. Then <laughs> I literally can't pick this up. Okay, tap off the excess gently and that's it. That is your underwater sandy layer on there, which I'm happy with. This is a really interesting product. It's lichen. You can dye this various different colors, but once you cut it up into small pieces, it looks exactly like coral, as you'll see. I'm going to add a bit of coral because I just want to. Coral. Now to make this, I've got, ooh, that's sticky. Made a mess. So this is, it's actually lichen in all different colors. I think, I know I want to use the red. I feel like I should use another color as well. So maybe red and pink, no. Red and orange, red and green, red and orange. I feel red and orange works well. Coral does actually come in these colors too, so don't, don't come for me. So you only need a tiny bit. This is the, the lichen, but it definitely works for Carl. So I'm gonna go for some of the bigger. Ooh, it's squidgy. Right. I'm gonna clip off a tiny smidgy bit. Oh my, it just keeps coming. Hold on. Smidge. Now the reason my bags are sticking together is because I had a, a resin leakage, so don't judge me. I'm gonna take a little blob of the basing glue. Go, I'm putting it on this piece of plastic. I'm gonna dip it in where I want it to stick. And I'm going to blob it on there like that. I'm happy with that. And I'm gonna take the red one and I'm gonna do the same thing. I might do this a little bit different. I might do like two small bits on this one. It's so squidgy, what is this stuff? Bouncy, I love it. With the base set, it's time to move on to the cool bit. This is the bit I'm excited for. So we got our green stuff world UV resin in transparent. Okay, so we are going to squeeze it out. Now this stuff smells like death and you want to do lots of thin layers as well. I'm trying not to let it like sit on the top of the coral. I want to do it. I don't want there to be any air bubbles either, you know? Okay, let's let that level. It levels out quite easily itself. So I want all the bottom covered, but I do want one thin layer. We'll set it, cure it, satiate it. I don't know, whatever the word is. This stuff is really easy to use, but you do need quite a bit, I think. I've got two of these little bottles. Oh, that's probably a thicker layer than I wanted. Three thin layers and 15 minutes of setting later, you are left with a full base. You can, of course, add splash effects and waves to the top, but we kept it simple. Okay, it's the time. The time has come. We're gonna pop this base out and see how it looks. This is the most satisfying bit. I would actually watch people do this. Yeah, 
yes, look at that. It looks amazing. Now, it looks better from the top than it does from the side, but you know whenever you see people do like resin tables and stuff, they always like file it down and then they put some sort of polish on it and it looks super shiny. So I'm gonna figure out how they do that and I'm gonna do that too because you can't see through it from the side right now. It's like misty. But from the top, yes, that looks amazing. Imagine your model standing in that, like knee deep in water. That would look amazing. That would look so good. If he was as well, I would put the little bit of splash effect around his knees and it would just look, look so good. But I'm, I'm super happy with that. It turns out using water effects really isn't that difficult and you can achieve really cool things by doing this. You can get different shapes, different sizes, you can splash things up against stuff, you can fill small holes or do sewers and for just a couple of quid from Green Stuff World, I highly recommend this product. And there we go, those are Kira's bases she's done today. They didn't take her very long. If you haven't done much basing before, I hope you can learn and take something from this video because Kira is a beginner and I'm sure she would agree that it's not something she's done a lot of, but I think she's managed to achieve really cool effects and really cool finishes with very little work. It's nice to see someone progress and to use different products and to try different things. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please do make sure you like, share, subscribe and hit the alarm bell for more videos to come. Check out all the links down below. You can buy most of the products there, whether through Amazon links, or other website links or my own website where I am now stocking some of these products as well. There's also a link to Patreon. If you guys want to join the Discord or have any questions for myself or Kira, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Thank you very much, guys. Go forward, start working on those bases and get things finished. Take care.